Hey there, this is Sam Frangioni. I'm so glad that you are watching this video right now. We are in our second series, really, or sorry, our first series of the year, but our second week talking about comparison. And today we are really getting at the idea of identity and what that means. And I want you to think about maybe if there's someone that you look up to in your life, is there anyone that you look up to, whether it's someone that's in your family, whether it's someone that's an athlete or a singer or somebody that's famous, it could be either one of those, right? Like sometimes we look up to certain people for certain things and other people for other things. I know for me growing up, I looked up to a, a guy named Roberto Clemente. I talked about him earlier this summer, if you were with us, and I looked up to him. He was a major league baseball player back in the 60s, so way before I was born. And uh, he, but he played, he overcame adversity. He was extremely generous and he made a lot of sacrifices uh, for the people that he cared about. And so there were things about him that I looked up to. And so I would just wonder, and I would challenge you wherever you're at right now, take a minute, think about the people that you look up to. And I talked about this a little bit last week, I think, but how even sometimes when we're looking up to people, in a sense, we're comparing ourselves, right? And so sometimes I don't think this is necessarily true with the people that we look up to, but sometimes with them though, it can seem so far out of reach, like whatever it is. So for Roberto Clemente, he actually ended up passing away. He died in a plane crash when he was on a plane that he got on to go give medical supplies to people in Nicaragua after there was an earthquake. So for that kind of sacrifice, I could get stuck in a comparison cycle of saying, well, could I ever be that sacrificial or could I ever be that generous so much as to give my life? However, that's what Jesus does, right? So there are some times where we can compare ourselves to the people we look up to in such a way that it seems out of reach. But I think it's important for us to know who we are so that when we do compare ourselves to the people we look up to, we're able to, to still be confident in who God created us to be, knowing that maybe it's good to have hopes, good to have dreams, and good to have goals, but at the same time, being confident and content with who God has created us to be. And so our scripture for today that we're looking at is in Genesis chapter 32. And we're looking at a guy named Jacob. I've talked about Jacob before at Breakaway, if you've ever been able to join us, but I want you to know as we look at him, he's going through a lot. He's been through a lot like maybe you have, I don't know where you are at watching this right now, but maybe you feel like you've just been through a lot. Maybe this year has felt like it's been a lot for you. And so Jacob, we can relate to him because he has been through a lot, okay? Where we're picking up, he's actually in a wrestling match with God. He's in a wrestling match with, it says a man, and the man, scholars say, was meant to resemble Jesus or some form of Jesus. And this is what it says. It says, that night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabuk. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. Maybe right now you feel like you're alone, but it's interesting because here it says Jacob was alone. And this is where the man, remember I said that this man resembles Jesus, resembles God, this man, wrestled with him when he was alone. God sometimes does his best work when we are or when we feel alone. And so I'd encourage you, if you feel alone in this season, to know, like, sometimes this is where God meets us. Sometimes this is where God does his best work. And that's what we find here with Jacob. The story keeps going. So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with this man. And the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. So they wrestled all night, right? They wrestled all night. And then it says, but Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. That seems kind of a weird thing to say when you're in the middle of a eight hour long wrestling match. And he's, he's like, got him like pinned down, right? And he's like, I won't let you go. Or I'm not gonna let you go unless you bless me. And then, right, and it's like, what? You'd be like saying uncle or you'd be like tap out, tap out. But that's what Jacob went with. I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? What is your name? See the man, again, remember this is Jesus. This is God saying, what is your name? He knows his name. He knows it's Jacob. And he's just asking him. He wants him to tell him who he is. See, something we haven't talked about is that the name Jacob, it means heel grabber. 
It means deceiver. And so Jacob's whole life, he has lived in kind of this shadow life of being uh, uh, someone who deceives other people, someone who lies, someone who is on the run. And this, when we pick up on this story, he's been running away from his family for 20 years because of what he did to them, because of how he betrayed them and how he deceived them. And so God just wants him to say who he is. He just wants him to tell him his name. And Jacob says, when he's asked his name, he says, Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and you've overcome. And so what I want for us to know today, because what happens here is we see Jacob receives this new identity and this new name of Israel, this new meaning, this new purpose in life, because Jacob had lived in the shadows. He had lived as a deceiver for so long. And now God, because he wrestled with him when he was alone, He met him where he was and he gives him a new identity because Jacob has now confessed the truth about who he's been and the truth about who he was in his life. And now only then is he able to receive his true identity. So what I want for you to do today as a family, if you're, I hope you're watching this with someone, hope you're watching this with a parent, a sibling, somebody. And what I want you to be able to do is to take a moment after this video, maybe put on some worship music, maybe just turn the TV off, Get in, get in somewhere quiet and just ask yourself this question. Ask God, okay? And just ask him in your head. You could ask him out loud if that helps. And you can just say, God, what are the things that I need to confess about my life? What are the things or the lies that I have believed about who I am? See, because God knew Jacob's new identity. He knew what he wanted to call him. He knew that he had this new name for him, but he needed to hear Jacob admit the ways that he had been living first. He needed to, he needed Jacob to believe for himself and to know for himself that the things that he had been doing were not what God intended for him or what God wanted for him. There was more. And so I believe that the same is true for you, that there are things that God wants to remove from you, maybe burdens that you've been carrying that you don't need to carry anymore. In Matthew chapter 11, it says to, it says to come to me. This is Jesus. He says, come to me, all who labor, all who work and are heavy burdened, are carrying a lot of weight for I will give you rest is what he says. Come to me for I will give you rest. And I believe maybe that's what he wants to say to you today, wherever it is that you're watching this. Okay. And so I want you to ask that question. What is it that you need to stop believing? What is it that's not true about who you believe you are or the things that you need to to release to God? And then I want you to ask this, what are the truths that God wants to speak into you? Maybe there's a new name, a new identity that God wants to give to you and the, that speaks to how he created you and what he created you to do. Okay, maybe it's something like like warrior, a new identity for you, a peacemaker, a new identity for you, a lover of God's children, a light, a joy, whatever it is. I believe that there is something that he sees in you that maybe you don't know yet about yourself. And so I want you guys to explore that today. So get with your family, get with your mom, dad, brother, sister, grandma, grandpa, whoever is there, get with them. Maybe talk, have a conversation about this. Maybe they've been on a similar journey or maybe you can go on the journey with them. All right, thank you so much for watching today. Feel free to tell us how this helped you or encouraged you in the comments and make sure to keep up, up with us on social media and we will uh, be here again next week. Thanks so much for watching.